Let's go, girls. Come on. Hey, y'all. So, different view today. I am trying something new, and hopefully, as time goes on, I will figure out a better setup, or if this setup works, or what we need to do to fix it. First off, this is going to be Stitch With Me number one. The girl behind the camera is Amy, and it is August 5th, 2019. This is a project I'm working on today, and I'm starting page three, so it's going to be kind of boring, but I thought it was kind of perfect for me to do my very first practice round. We are right about here, I would say. Right in this general area. So what I'm going to be working on is right here in all of this 310. So, hopefully I don't knock the camera. Hopefully my camera stays in focus. And let's do this. Okay. And I'm working around, so my camera's right here in front of me. So the little podium thing that I have it standing on is uh, I'm wrapping my arms around it to see if I can do this. And I'm stitching this two over one on 18 count Ada. And hopefully this goes smoothly. I'm a little worried about that autofocus thing that my Linda likes to do. Linda is my phone. It's kind of odd stitching with one hand instead of two. See, and this is what I'm worried about. Okay, so let's... Hmm. If I can just... Linda, if you could just stay focused, please. Let's not do this zoom in, zoom out thing. Just because my hand gets in the way. Alright. So hopefully this isn't going to be too bad or too shaky. Oh, Linda. Because I actually have something really exciting that I want to talk about, but I don't want to have to keep touching my phone for Linda to focus. Let's see how this goes. I've also now realized that the thing holding my phone is right in the spot where my timer is and therefore I may not know how long the video is and it might cut me off before I get the chance to say bye. So these are all things that I have to learn and think about as we continue with this stitch with me thing. As for my stitch with me's, I am doing the arbitrary August. I am using the decision wheel. My wheel chose be mine today. I have worked on so far. Let's see if I can oh, recall any of them. Uh, what did I work on yesterday? I worked on Crazy Cat Chloe. I've worked on my medieval sow. I've worked on... yep. Hmm. It's day five. So this is project five. Which means I've worked on four projects prior to this. And I... am not focusing on my screen. Let's see. So... Oh, I st um, worked on a project that I started in July, which was the, um, hopefully I say it right, Sing a Sampler Series by, is it Silver Creek? Jan Hicks is also doing it, and I am following suit in doing it in her rainbow formation. Okay, this autocorrect thing is going to drive, how do I fix this? Let me see if I can pause and be right back. Okay, apparently, I cannot pause, go into my setting feature, 
whoops, and come back. I turned off the autofocus, so hopefully maybe that will help. Nope, not at all. That did not help at all. Okay, so if I make this a total pain in my Tushkoski and sorry, we're gonna learn this together, right? It's part of the adventures. If I do this, instead of having my hand come across the camera, it's gonna slow me down, but that's all right. It'll be worth it. It's my two-handed stitching anyway, right? This is what I wanted, yes? Okay, this seems to work. A little bit. It's kind of hard to stitch through the phone instead of looking at my actual piece. But I think this might work. Okay, we're gonna run with this for a minute. So all I'm doing is straight across. It's all 310. I think in this block, this block, and this block, if I remember correctly. So I definitely won't make it through all of that in this stitch with me. That would be a very long, very long stitch with me. Okay. So we're just going to keep, keep trying and see what happens. And I just realized that I'm doing this one stitch at a time when usually I do one leg at a time, but I was a wee bit nervous and forgot what I was doing. It's okay. All right. Back to what I was trying to say with the arbitrary August thing. And hopefully this is not too... Like, only way to get better is by doing um, the arbitrary August thing. So on the first, I worked on the Sing a Sampler series, and I'm doing it in the same formation that Jan Hicks is doing it, which is the four across in two rows instead of doing um, all eight of the designs in one long strip and in rainbow order. So that was fun. And then on the second, I worked on my Green Bay Packers project. And then Mythical Meet Evil Sal. And then Crazy Cat Chloe, if I could speak. And then today I'm working on the Be Mine. And hopefully, okay, I have to skip my chair in just a little bit. Hopefully, oh, it's not too loud and I don't shake you guys too too much. It's not too too crazy. Let me move my extra long fabric out of the way. Okay. I don't know if I need to be closer. So okay, we're gonna call this oh I stuck my wrong the wrong hand up there. Wait, I forgot what I was doing. It's really that easy for me to forget. Okay. So we'll do the back and forth, back and forth. And yeah, that's okay. This is worth it. It's worth it. Get a good stitch with me in, hang out with you guys. I really have no idea how long I've been recording. I also don't know how much time I get because now I'm using my... Um, so not the camera that faces you, but the, the regular camera that's on the back of the phone, which I was told you get more time with. So we'll find out together. Worst comes to worst, it'll cut me off at 30 minutes, and I'll do a quick 30 second farewell. And have the hubby snip it all together, because he already has to snip the first part of this video before I started messing with the settings. Come on, little buddy, you can do it. There we go. And then my, I guess my next question is, I have this feature on my phone where, okay, so this is going to be option one and option two. So we're really super close now. So you guys tell me if one or two. It's like being at the doctor's office. One or two. I think with two, I can stitch with one-handed, which doesn't hurt my shoulders much. 
when I'm holding the hoop. I may have just lied. We'll see what happens. Okay. Let's get back to the arbitrary August thing of what I'm doing. And if you hear a snapping noise, it's just my wrist. I'm fine. It's done that for as long as I can remember. Nothing bad is happening. And so. I also vape. So if you hear that noise that you may have just heard, which sounds like a crackling noise, that is my vape doing its thing. When I stitch, I stitch to relax. And so there we are. Okay. Now that we've got all that stuff out of the way, I think. Um, for those of you who do not follow me on any social media other than here on YouTube, totally cool. But I made a post the other day, and yesterday, day before, and have you ever just randomly, like, thought of something and look back at it and go, you know, that was actually a really good quote. Pretty proud of myself for coming up with that one. I made a quote that I'm pretty proud of. Now, somebody may have already said it, but I thought of it. I haven't heard anyone else say it, so I'm going to call it mine, and that's okay. I put up a post about a um, about the Gidge Box subscription for my Color Street because I was talking to my upline and I was telling her, you know, my life has been kind of crazy, things have been going on, and I've literally just put Color Street on the side, and I'm still really excited about it. I still truly love the product, um, and and I I want to do better in my business, and I feel like I've kind of not necessarily failed, but haven't done my best to succeed. That is not in the right spot. So let's back that out. Is it in the right spot? Okay, there we go. That's better. And so her and I were talking, and I was like, I noticed that on your business page you have a subscription box. What is that? How do you do that? And so she kind of walked me through it and was talking to me about it, was giving me some excellent advice, and I said, you know what? I am so terrified of screwing something up, making a mistake, disappointing people because I'm learning and, you know, me learning something like this would affect other people and what I mean by that is that if you put in an order, um, this is no longer going to be coming from Color Street directly to your house unless you order it from Color Street. But if you order it through the subscription box, you're going to be ordering it technically through me, which means the product will come to my home and then I, in turn, will send it out to you. So what if I mess up? What if I make a mistake? What if I can't figure out how to invoice through Square, or if I don't know how to make a subscription box, or if I, you know, all these, all these automatic panic mode failure things are going through my head. And I've already kind of set myself up to fail because I haven't thought of one positive thing that, it, that could happen if I just tried. Well, on a little side note here, my son, um, who is now in the sixth grade, his name is Jonah, and obviously I'm his mother, so I may be just a tad bit biased, but I just think he's the most adorable child in the world, who's also the, one of the biggest pains in my butt. But you know, um, he is running for student student council. It's something that he's wanted to do for a couple of years now. His older sister is has been in student council um, in and out through her junior high year and all through her high school career so far. She's a junior in high school now. And he's looked up to her and was like, you know, that's something I want to do. I want to be in the student council. I want to make a difference. And I don't know what I'm, I could possibly do to make the difference, but I want to try. And so this year he decided to try for student council and um, he was really nervous because he had to make a, a leadership essay. And it turned into, I don't know what to say, what if I say something wrong, what if they don't like my speech, or what if they don't like my essay, what if I don't get in, maybe I'm just not going to do this. And I looked at him and I thought to myself, really? You haven't even tried yet 
can't give up so easily. That's, that's a horrible way to live your life. Right? Are you seeing where my dots are starting to connect here? So, all weekend, my husband, myself, my daughter who's in student council, and my youngest daughter, who apparently, according to the vice principal, when she is old enough to be in student council, they're not even going to vote, they're just going to hand it to her. Whatever position she wants, they're just going to give it to her. Um, and that would be my little Miss Scarlet, who is the youngest one, who is um, starting the bully awareness committee at school, which I'm extremely proud of her for. And, um, anywho, so, you know, my son is freaking out. You can see his nerves are really starting to get to him. And, Mom, what if I can't do this? What if they don't like my, my essay? What if I don't type something right? What if my grammar's all incorrect? I don't even know what to say. And we encouraged him all weekend long to just, you know what, dude? Just try. Just try. I'd much rather you try and not get in than wonder what if. And I sat down one night and I thought, you... There were a couple curse words in there, but I won't say them here. You can fill in the blanks. Um, how are you preaching to this, all of this, to your son? And yet, you're too much of a chicken to do a subscription box for your business. You're too scared to do a stitch with me because what if people don't like it? What if it doesn't look right? What if I can't get close enough? What if I bump the camera? I've already set myself up to fail in 20 million different ways instead of going, you know what? Let's just try it. The worst thing that's going to happen is people are going to give me a thumbs down and you guys are going to go, what the F were you thinking? Please don't do this again. And then I'll know. Because at least then I'll know. I'll know that, you know what, Stitch With Me is, mm, maybe they're not my thing. And that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Because not everything has to be my thing. I don't have to be good at everything. I enjoy being a jack of all trades master of none. But that doesn't mean I have to try to master everything. Just what I enjoy. But the purpose of putting these up on floss tubes or YouTube is so that you people enjoy them with me. And that hole was not very distinctive, but okay, I think I'm in the right spot. Um, you know, for those of you who may not know, I am a fairly new stitcher. Um, I started, this January will be two years that I have been stitching. I played Thread Chicken a lot, so don't get nervous. We're fine. We're fine. <laughs> um, but I have fallen in love with the community, and 99.9% .9 of it is great. There are a few little ticks and tacks there that are, you know, cause issues, but, you know, if there wasn't a single issue somewhere, then it just wouldn't be right. <laughs> I'm just saying. And let me... I don't... I see what you're seeing out the corner of my eye, but I don't have perfect vision out of my peripheral, so I'm not sure. Oh my. And I use... Um, sorry to get off topic here. I use the... Um, what are these called? The Easy Guide? I don't know if you'll be able to see this. Nope. Oh no. Okay. There we go. The Easy Guide needles. They have the little dot there. Okay. Um, and refocus. Perfect. Okay. I use those and I love them. The issue I have with them. Oh my. I dropped my needle. There we go. The issue that I have with them is that, um, and it's not even really an issue because obviously I can still do what I need to do, um, is that sliding it under the back oh can you see sliding it under the back here sometimes it's a wee bit difficult because it's not a sharp tip to just 
shove through. Okay. I tried to be smart and have needles pre-threaded, so here we go. I've also noticed that I think I stitch backwards. Because I think most of you go from left to right. And then left to right, if that makes sense. So your X's are this way. Whereas my X's, I start over here and go down, and over here and go down. So I don't know if that's... And I know, I know, everyone says there's no wrong way to stitch. Um, I don't know why I started stitching that way. Or how I got into the habit of stitching that way. I just know that this is how I stitch. Except for, um, I don't know if any of you all remember the Mag Magnificent Wizard piece that is technically my oldest whip. Um, oh, what happened? Linda, what are you doing? Why are you messing with my eyeballs? Are you good now? I hope so. Okay. Um, I think my X's are the, the opposite direction on that. Which I think is another reason why I have a hard time working on it, because I have to constantly remind myself, literally, with every stitch, go the wrong way. Oh, I have a very strong feeling. You know, and one of my other fears was, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to say? Um, I, don't, I don't know why I doubt myself when it comes to that. Because I literally will probably go through about, mm, let's say, 349 projects. I won't say 394, but 349. Subjects, every video. I will randomly come up with something that has to do with nothing. I thought, because I watch a young lady named um, Stitching Jewels, I'm sure most of you or all of you know who she is by now. Um, I love watching her Stitch With Me videos because she's just as random and she'll go really strong on a topic and then all of a sudden she's singing a song. And then she's talking to her birds or she's quiet for a moment and that's okay too. But anyways, back to the boy story. Story about the boy. I kind of had to kick myself in the butt. Because here I am telling my teenage daughter, because she's trying to give him all sorts of advice, you should practice what you preach. Don't just preach to a choir and not sing the same song. Um, that, hey, maybe... It's time for me to follow my own advice and stop advising my children on things that I, on, you know, morals that I want them to learn because I have to lead by example too. So here we are. I have decided, as I told my upline and I put on my Facebook post, It is time to get in get in gear and get rid of the fear. And that was the quote I was pretty proud of. Time to get in gear and get rid of the fear. Because the only thing holding me back was myself and my fear of how bad am I going to screw this up. Okay, and my bottom fabric has moved. Oh, yeah, alright. Okay, I think... Just because I can't see the bar through the bar doesn't mean you can't see what I'm stitching. I hope. And my fabric is leaning right up against the um, stick thing that's holding the camera up. So maybe if I shift that under my arm, it won't bump the camera as much. Okay. Let's see how far this gets us. I do have to admit, stitching farther away from me like this does give my shoulder a little bit of anger, but that's all right. We will learn as we go, and I'm sure my husband will have some pointers for me on where to move it to. If I shift just a little bit. Okay, 
Let's see if that... I definitely cannot see the timer now, but that's okay. So yeah, here we are. I am doing a Stitch With Me video. I have created the boxes. If anyone is interested, I will leave the link down below um, for the subscription box. I appreciate everyone who takes a moment just to take a peek at it, even if you don't join. Um, I hope that it's going to do really well for me. I am, I am trying to do what my mother used to tell me, which is to shut up and think positive. That was my mother's quote. She would throw her hands out and say, shut up and think positive. Why do you always think so negative? I've always been a negative thinker, even as a kid. My brain automatically goes to worst case scenario. And then I try to ration it out, rational, we think it all out from there and think logically. And then I take myself down from the high anxiety level that I've just put myself into for absolutely no reason and talk myself out of it. <laughs> Apparently it's something about me that has never changed. It may not ever change. And that's okay. Part of who I am. So, I also don't know, I'm trying to talk a little bit quieter, which is odd for me. Kind of makes me feel like my voice sounds weird. But I'm also really extremely close to the microphone on my phone. I do know that I have a very deep voice and it does carry fairly well throughout my entire house, even when I'm speaking normally. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I grew up with a hearing impaired father who could hear, but um, not very well. So I've always had to be loud. I've always had to enunciate all of my words because he was also a lip reader, which is actually very beneficial to my husband because he also is a lip reader. And when he doesn't have his hearing aids in, I've got to yell. So my vocal cords are pretty well used to that. So I'm trying not to use my normal um, tone of voice, I guess I should say, because I am really close to this microphone. And I'm hoping, I think I like Vision 2. I think starting out with Vision 1 works great, so I can show you what I'm working on and where my starting point is, and then switching over to Vision 2 to go exactly where I'm at. I think I like it. As long as you guys are okay with me switching the viewpoints in the beginning and at the end. Because I might switch it back to viewpoint 1 so I can see my farewells. So we'll see. So yeah, again, super excited. I know it doesn't sound like it because again, I'm trying to keep my voice low so I don't uh, hurt anyone's ears, especially if you guys are wearing headphones. Um, yeah, total train of thought lost. Oh, subscription box, yes, yes. I will leave the document down below. It's on a Google Doc form, and uh, billing will start tomorrow. I'm super excited. I've had one good friend, I won't mention any names or anything like that except for one. Um, I've had a good friend sign up for a box, which was super exciting. She was my first. And then my kid, because my kid has a job now, and she's obsessed with all things Color Street. She even asked if she could be a stylist. The answer was no. She's not 18. But maybe when she turns 18, if she's still obsessing over the product like I am, she just might become a stylist. And that girl could sell ice to Eskimos. She's got a very good bubbly personality. She's sometimes way over the top for me, but I'm a little more on the mellow side. There's nothing mellow about my Brianna, that's for sure.
98% of the time. She has to sleep at some point. <laughs> but yeah, back to the, back to the boy. Uh, we had to do, he had to record his first video, and I am so super proud of him. I didn't cry, I did not cry, I got close, there was a couple of tears that formed in the corner of my eye, and I said stop it, and they stopped, and I behaved myself. So, my husband went through and did all the editing for him, and he just looks all so grown up, and I'm. we found out... <laughs> Because, of course, we spent hours and hours and hours of... Because he was only allowed to have one minute. And so my husband was trying to squeeze in all the editing that he needed to do, or wanted to do, I should say. Because there was, there was no need to edit. It was a want. And then to fit my son's speech in there, and to get my son not to be nervous in front of a camera, which I totally understand and get. Um, we had to cram it all in in one minute. And I think... You got it down to one minute and nine seconds. And I just noticed my tail end is really off, so I'm just gonna check my back. I see a little bit of a bump there, but that's all right. I'm going to fix that, because that drives me crazy. There we go. Okay. Because then I end up thinking I can play thread chicken for longer than I really can. That's never fun. And I don't know how well I could thread my needle with you guys as witnesses. Okay. So yeah, he we made they made uh my daughter Brianna, the one who's in student council, was helping him make posters and he did uh what were his posters? One of them was like a checklist and it says uh something along the lines of um wake up, make bed, brush teeth, vote for Jonah, or something like that. And the only box that was checked off was vote for Jonah. And then the other one said, um, I have to remember it. It's look at her. She's voting for Jonah Taylor as VP or something like that. But the instead of writing the word look, it's the two eyes that are looking to the left, I think. Which way are they on the poster? It doesn't matter. You guys follow me. And then the at symbol and then a Hershey bar. My son drew a big Hershey bar. And then the last one they did something along the lines of, hey, vote for Jonah for VP free drinks on me and then it's pointing down to the water fountain which I thought was super clever so Scarlett helped him out a little bit and I know he was a little nervous to have her help because he was afraid she was going to make a mess of things but you know when you have the little little ones running around you get a little more nervous about them helping with certain things like that but she did really good she helped him out, and I think he kind of kept her distracted by, here, why don't you make a pretty plate for the jewelry that you'll want to make, or something like that. And so, we got him his school colors and necklaces, and the, the best and worst part is that, so, I was never in student council. I know we had to vote. I remember voting for student council, but I don't remember how it all went down and how it worked. Um, and mine was only in high school. I don't remember anything about junior high. So anyways, um, apparently the teachers, the ones who are running the student council, chose the members of who was going to be in student council. And then the students from that point got to pick and choose names for who they wanted in what position. And so um, there were three people chosen one of the young ladies uh, decided she did not want to be vice president. My son was nominated for vice president, and his best friend of three years was also nominated for vice president. And he's like, Mom, I don't know what to do. Do I, do I go for it, or do I? I'm like, no, you go for it. 110%. And I said, you know what? In a way, this isn't a bad thing. Because you and your friend 
And uh, I'll do a real quick shout out if she chooses to watch this video because I just found out she subscribed. Hi, Sienna, my other child. Um, they, they're best friends and I love the relationship that they have. And I told him, I said, even if she wins, would you be mad at her? He's like, well, no. Would you work with her? Well, of course I would. Sienna. Like, exactly. So instead of it being like a, oh, I can't believe I lost to you, and it turning into like a hostile environment, you're still going to be working with your best friend. So even if you win or you lose, does it really matter? I know that you want the title, but are you really going to be upset if you lose to her, of all people? And he's like, well, no. I'm like, okay then. So it's, it's a friendly competition between the two of you. It doesn't make either one of you, like, worse than the other because the other one lost or won. Yeah. So I'm super... My husband is texting me and he's like, I'm super anxious about... Do they, does he get to use the video or does he have to, because they said that something about how they had to record the video at school because they're, I guess they don't make the kids like, you know, have anxiety attacks by standing up in front of the class or the, the you know, entire gym like we used to do back in the day and uh, do the speech in front of the entire school. They go through and they record and then they do um, videos in each classroom, I think. Something along those lines. Sorry, my extra fabric is getting all wonky and wobbly on me here. Okay. I don't know how it keeps shifting, but it keeps it keeps moving. And I'm gonna turn you guys this way with me, so that way we can see what's going on over on this side. Um, so, yeah, we spent hours editing this video, and then we were like, well... Maybe you should just go ahead and take a copy of your speech in case they're like, no, we don't want you to bring home videos in. We want to do the videos for you here at school so you have the school in the background or something like that, which would totally be disappointing. But I guess I totally understand. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I think I can get one more stitch out of that. We're gonna try it. I don't know why I play Thread Chicken, especially with 310 because I have a cone. Don't think I have the largest cone. Oopsie, and I almost pulled that thread right out of there. Okay, time to end this one. Uh -uh. Okay. So yeah, we had couple of weeks where we were struggling and emotional and all that stuff and now I think oh I'm going into the Ada I can't see what I'm doing y'all I can't see no I don't want to poke through the Ada I think this is how I shifted my fabric it's because I couldn't see what I was doing I usually don't have this many difficulties, but of course because I'm recording. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna go up here and start anew then. Fine. Fine. It's all good. There we go. And I'll put that in my little oh, pin cushion. And... No, I don't like the angle I'm going at that cut. Okay, there we go. Again, working around a pole is a little difficult. It's a little odd. It's a little different, but it's okay. I'm learning. Ooh. Shifting the fabric again. Come back into place. And go. How long have we been going at this? How long have I been rambling? Mm, I think that says 34. Maybe we'll go for a little bit longer can't believe I have this. Well, it was a very exciting week. My son is running for vice president of his student council class. I did a gidge box. I think I'm gonna make a, have my son make a big old poster that says, um, you know, I already forgot my quote. 
Please hold. It'll come back to me. Time to get in gear, get over the fear. And so I posted it, I posted that on my Facebook and on my um, Instagram and on my VIP group. So every time someone says something or it gets a like, that's the first thing I see. Um, in the little line there of what post was commented on or liked or whatever. So, yeah, I think it's time. I think it's time to just, you know what? Just go for it. I can't tell my kid to be like, it's okay to be nervous and be scared, but you just gotta go for it. When I'm sitting over here in a dark little corner all by myself, being a little chicken, you know what? Right? Right. And for some of you, this you may be looking at this going, why is this scary? To me, it's scary because it's new. I know how to stitch. I know how I, I personally like to stitch. But the whole setup thing, this autofocus thing that my camera is doing, which is being weird again, I think because I'm going a longer distance across my... my uh, so if I cut that distance out according to the camera, maybe it won't be so bad. Whoops. Unless I get caught like that. Um, you know, the Gidge box is, it requires using technology. It requires using Google Docs and Excel spreadsheets and um, me keeping track and, and things like that. It requires a lot of computer stuff, and computers in general, just looking at them, make me have heart palpitations because I'm afraid they're going to crack and break and explode as soon as I walk by, because it's me. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to finish out this row. I feel like I moved really slow stitching, but you know what? That's okay. Every stitch counts. I got to hang out with the peeps. I got to share a little bit of what's going on in my life. It's a new, uh, a new view. Whoa. Which is kind of funny because all my videos in the beginning, this is all you saw. Nobody saw my face. Nobody knew what I looked like. I didn't do face-to-face -face videos. That was extremely nerve-wracking when I started. Now it's a breeze. Um... But I think because this is more up close and personal, whereas before I was trying to get as much of the background as I could so you guys could see everything that was going around me, now I want you in as close as I can get you for the stitching because I know that's what I personally like. I like watching the thread go in and out and hearing the sounds and to me it's very, very therapeutic, even if it's not me stitching. So hopefully this went okay. And it's not as bad as my lovely little brain hyped it up to be, and it's everything's fine. And oh, I couldn't find my needle. I was looking through the camera, and we're okay. Oh boy, that's only two rows, y'all. I got three more to go, but it's a good start. It's a good start. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening. Are we recording now? I don't see a timer. Okay. Anyways, I had a feeling it was going to chop me off. So, here we go. I changed it back to view one. And we can kind of see everything that was going on. Um, two rows out of the 30 that I have to do. So, not too bad. I don't, I don't think this went horrible. I definitely think there's things I can change. Um, I'm, I'm just practicing with my hand in and out of the camera to see where it has issues focusing but it seems at a farther distance it's not as bad for some reason when I take my hand and go here nope see it's of course now it's focusing of course anyways so I'm gonna leave that right there I'm gonna show you the picture again that we are working on and again right up in this area somewhere thanks for hanging out with me letting me chit chat with all the exciting news that's happened this week and uh, I'm sure I will talk about it again for those who do not watch Stitch With Me. It's perfectly fine. Um, again, leaving the Google Docs down below. And hopefully, 
by Wednesday, uh, I will be able to tell you a little bit more about what happened with student council and how my son did. Um, I don't think he knows final results until Friday. So, scissor pop Friday, maybe? We'll see what happens. Again, thank you all so much for hanging out with me and spending your time with me. Hopefully you got some stitching done, too, because mine was pretty simple today. Because, you know, starting off, starting off. I'll get into more challenging stuff later, I promise. I will see you guys next time. Remember, stay random. Don't kiss your projects. Bye!